Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag. Hashtag. W-A-W. What? what a week. What a week. Week. Taking a cue from a certain minister of utility, a utility, we can tell you that the show will end, but we won't tell you when it will end. We can't. However, in the meantime, we'll have some cool guests, a couple of laughs, and even some info that won't leave you completely in the dark. Welcome back to Wow, What a Week. This is Wow, What a Week. What a Week. You can't make this shit up. Our comedy guest this week is a man who can entertain people from different communities and areas. A man who can rock an afro and grey hair at the damn same time. (laughs) A man who can walk the talk even if his toes aren't that pretty. A man who's sometimes a woman named Auntie Merle. Please give a wow welcome to the inimitable, the effervescent, the incredible Mark Lottering. Wow, he just called me a woman with ugly toes. <laughs> <laughs> what a welcome. And, and, and penal corns on your head. The, I, I have a thing about toes, so I judge my toes very harshly, but I judge other people who wear sandals. Yeah. Um... I have, harsh, I have harsh judgment for people who wear sandals. What, what, is, it, what, what is wrong with us? Oh, is it us? Do, do you have a problem with your toes? I no, no, I, you, 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 you more than likely have nice feet then. Um, yes, you do. I, 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 can, I can see you very comfortable. You're sitting there going. Is it my posture? I've got, got great feet, yeah. Or is it the sitting like I'm at the back of an Uber Black in your posture? <laughs> like that, pretty much <laughs> like that. I think if you've got, if you don't have great toes, um, you deserve to tell someone before you get into bed with someone. Yes. Um, you deserve to let that person know. Oh, that your toes are not. No, I'm coming from a from a traumatic past here, but yeah, <laughs> yeah nobody should be surprised. You is, know, is that why you committed to the first uh, uh, a guy that uh, tolerated your toes? Uh, to- uh, toleration, if you will. Um, sure, they've been several, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you hard on yourself though? Like genuinely. I am hard on myself. Um, you know, I, last week I was I was uh, we doing the show in Monte Casino, and I thought it was a really, really. I had a shit time on stage because it was hard work. Jeez, okay. And I, I, you know, you know, in the first ten minutes, yeah, this is going to be beautiful. It's going to be a dance with me and the audience. You know that in the first ten minutes. Yeah. That the flip side of that coin is you go. Oh, this is going to be one and a half hours of work. <laughs> We're going to work tonight. These people are sitting with their arms folded and going, we took our debit order money to come and watch you. This is better be worth our while. So so that's what I felt. And then when I got backstage, um, my partner, Anwar, was also, was also my director. Yes. He ca- and this has happened many times before. He came into the dressing room and went, wow, wow, that was amazing. And... For one and a half hours, I was judging myself very differently on yeah. stage. So I think for every comedian, um, you know, you, you can be quite harsh and hard on yourself. So when that happens, where you feel within the first 10 minutes of a show that, oh shit, it's going to be one of those shows, what happens with the audience or in the audience that might turn that around for you? It, you see, usually it follows on from a rock and roll audience in the previous night. And then in, in that particular instance, we had about three audiences that were just screaming. I mean, the Joburg people have been so fantastic. And they were, it literally was rock and roll. And they were carrying me. Oh, wow. And that's every yes. comic's dream yes. to be carried. And when people carry you, that on that night, you can try the new outrageous gigs that, g- gags that you've never tried before. And you can feel safe with them. So that had happened prior to this listening audience coming in. It just felt like more than half the audience had degrees. And, um, and they were there to, to watch the craft of comedy. So, but that was my feeling. And often what we feel on stage, um, you know, clearly when I come backstage and I hear from, from the director that it was amazing. So yeah, it, it's not always a true reflection of what's going on out there. Yes, sir. But the sound of laughter and the sound of people screaming with laughter, there's not enough money for that. Absolutely. And yeah, and I, f- I feel blessed and spoiled when that happens. Quickly, please tell us about this new show at Monty. 
It's called So I Wrote That Musical, and it's it's because I've written um, this trilogy of the Auntie Mill musicals. Yes. I've written a musical around my character, Auntie Mill. And it was a very different experience because suddenly I had 25 people um, on stage with me every night. Yes. Um, you know, which is just bizarre for, for a stand-up comedian. Because usually, you know, I, I tell the audience in this show, it's a lonely life. The only great thing about being a stand-up comedian is when you bow, then you know, I'm not sharing this money. Yes. It's just me on stage. I'm not splitting the check. Look at God. If I if you bow facing there and saying, kiss my ass, I want to spend my money like that. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like bowing the other way and thinking exactly that. Even if you're the top audience, I might just do that. Thank you. I'll tell people you asked me to do it. You're welcome. For research, you asked me to do it. So, um, wow, now I can't stop thinking about this. <laughs> I think if it's a bad audience, every comic should be allowed to face the other way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you read the signs correctly. So, um, and then suddenly there was this musical, and and you know, I think the first one I started writing about five years back, and man, it took off. Yeah. And um, and I wrote all the songs, which people don't believe. My friends refuse to believe that I wrote the songs. I watched the previous one at the Joburg Theatre. Oh yes. That was amazing. Surely you're referring to the one for which I won in the Lady Award. Is that the one you're referring that, that to? That is the one. But but it's incredible, the writing, the music, the bridges, like, carry you. Like, even if the song was just okay for you, when it yeah. gets to the bridge, you're like, oh, shit, is this where we're going? You'll be amazed how, how much good music you can write when you have one box of white wine in your room. I mean, so, um, and I came out of the room, and, and I just... I love music, much like you. Yes, sir. And I think you, if you love music a lot, you, you also grow accustomed to what you really enjoy listening to. So it's an absolute pleasure for me to write music. But it took off and people came to watch until we eventually wrote um, the third segment. And that, that show is coming to Joburg in Feb. It's called Auntie Mill, Things Get Real. And I feel it's like the end of a trilogy. But mm. the, the stand-up show came out of that because... Um, Firstly, people were, the, the, the Baxter was pushing me for the title. Yeah. And I thought, okay, let's just call it so I wrote that musical and I'll write material around the difference in the world of being the stand up comic and then suddenly being in the world of mm. musicals. Mm. But that's just one segment of the show. And we were just looking for a sexy caption to a show, as one does. So, um, so it covers topical issues and it talks about me straddling the two worlds. Now, you, you speak of the Baxter, you have quite a relationship with the Baxter Theatre. Uh, in fact, when you go into the Baxter Theatre, especially backstage, you know, there's pictures of greats like uh, Barney Simon, uh, yeah. John Carney, but your pictures are also there. Do you, do you, do you ever... You know, you know what this guy says, there are pictures of greats, but then you no, there no, as well. No, I mean, how, no, did, not really, no, no. how did the photocopy of your photo that you framed yourself and put in your bag and stuck on the backs of the corridors of plastic? No, no, no but the, the point I'm making, though, is do you ever walk into that iconic theatre and pinch yourself that I'm amongst greats here? Uh, uh, because every time I'm there... I spend half the time just looking at these pictures of all these greats, uh, half of whom people have never really appreciated the art and what they've brought to the arts. Yeah, and, and that's always true. Hey? When, and once people leave us, yes. then only do we realize what they brought to the table. But I pinch myself very regularly, even when I'm, when I'm on that stage, because um, the thing is in that Sometimes I look across that audience and, uh, you know, they've got these different levels and when it's sold out, you stand there. And for all the actors, it's quite a thing because yeah. it's a privilege to be. But for me, I see myself with no air being an usher in that very theater. That's where I worked for six years, showing people where to sit. How old were you at the time? Sure. I must have been about 58. And then... <laughs> Oh, so that was no, no, was telling. No, I, I was, I was, I was a student at UCT, so I was in my twenties. Sure, sure. So I was showing people where to sit. So that's where the first pinch comes in. Okay. I never forget that. So it's like full circle, really. It's full circle, and that's why I always, you know, I have a lot of time for ushers and always chatting to them at the theater because I know what it felt like. Because um, people often just, you know, they treat you like nothing. You're just tearing a ticket and and off you go. Yeah. So I do pinch myself, and when those pictures are. Are back there, um, yeah, amongst the, the greats. I always think I'm in over my head. 
sometimes I don't think I'm the only one who thinks that. I've, I've got close friends in the industry. Yes. And we have these conversations after our third tequila. Yeah. Where we go, how are we getting away with this? Like, like, it's like, <laughs> like, like, this is us. We're in over our heads. People are using strange adjectives when they talk about us. They use words like genre. Yes. <laughs> you know, when they, when they. Inimitable. Yes. Effervescent. But then you get to chat to, fr to friends who know you and they just introduce you as a woman with ugly toes. So it's, impo it's important on the subject of toes to stay grounded. Thank you. Let's talk about the evolution of uh, Auntie Mel. Um, do you remember the first time we ever met, me and you? Yes, I do. The first time me and you met... On the side at the theatre, in about, the small theatre. It was 24 years yes. ago, 23, 24 years ago. Um, I was dating your friend uh, Mushidi. You were dating Mushidi. Uh, and um, she said, let's go watch Mark's show. It's like, who the fuck is this Mark, man? It's like, I hope he's not an ex. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you were comforted by the, when you saw me. No, well, no, no, I definitely not an ex. No, no. So we walk into it was literally the, the little theater behind the Jobbik. Yes. And that's the first time I met you and I was introduced to Auntie Merle. Oh, yeah. And then I realized that, oh, okay, he's not a threat. Yeah, he's not a threat. <laughs> well, it could be, a, could be a cover. My brother, my brother always says, um, I feel so sorry for these guys who just assume that you're gay. <laughs> because you, you're in there with their girls <laughs> and like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, Mark is just so fabulous. <laughs> I'm so comfortable with Mark. <laughs> Now, looking back at the last 20, that is 20, years. 20, that's 24 years yeah. back, right? Wow. Looking back at the last 25, 26 sure. years of Auntie Mel's growth and evolution, was she supposed to live this long? No. Um, that was um, when you saw me, I was trying stuff out. Yes. And uh, the character allowed me to say things that were just outrageous. Um, you know, because if you're going to be on stage and talk about the racism of Cape Town, for yeah. example, if you decide that's where I want to go. Yeah. Um, I found that it was easier for me to say it being a woman in a floral dress to talk about it because people just go, oh, wow, that's outrageous. How can she say that? So it became a tool. And, um, but people fell in love with the character. Yeah. And people fell in love. Um, there's another character that we, we call a taxi gachi, collect yes. fares on the yes. taxi, yes. smiley. Um, and I would say there's another character who's a cashier who's just crazy, Colin the cashier. And these three people say things that mark the comedian mm. um, would not be comfortable saying. Oh, yes, yes. Um, so I separate my worlds of the character and my, my worlds of the stand-up comic, you know. And like the show I'm doing now, it's just, it's straight stand-up. Well, I use the word straight loosely. Straight <laughs> stand-up comedy and you just go for one and a half hours. And um, so people fell in love with Mel, and then she came back, and then the character was just, then people started saying, oh, we enjoyed the show, but where was Mel? Yes. Um, and so through the years, I've made up her family, because you know you get bored on stage, and I've spoken about her husband. Her family grows. Anyways. And yeah, and her daughter got married. So no, people have not met these. They were just figments of my imagination and everybody else's. And with, these, with a musical then, um, Anwar decided, he said to me, why don't you just write? You always complain when you go and watch musicals because I don't, I love great musicals, but my, I'm always saddened when I see so much talent in our country, but we insist on doing the international musical. Oh, yes, yes. There's yes. a place for that, but we neglect. My, my, my daughter was in Madagascar just the other day. I mean, it would have been dope for her to be in a local musical. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. You see? So, and then we have this... Um, I think, you know, because there's so many performers who need work. Yeah. And, 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 but, and I, I'm, I'm not dissing the fact that people can go and audition for these great musicals, but you should see our people's faces light up when I present them with a script and they can use their own accents. Oh, yeah. And we have our own references and we are as sexy as the rest of the world. Yeah. So when people from outside of South Africa came to watch um, you know, the more musicals, and it's not just my musicals, other local musicals as well. Mm. They get up on their feet and they cry and they applaud. So I think as South Africans, we need to work more on our appreciation for ourselves, mm. to celebrate ourselves, to believe that we are sexy in the world and we can stand on world stages with our own accents, our own music. And, and unfortunately, there's only been a handful of our popular stage culture that has been exported. 
Yes. And and you know, outside of your King Kongs and your Lion Kings, perhaps, yeah. and your Sarafinas, we're not exporting enough of popular culture from from the theatre. Yeah, I think that uh, that's got a lot to do with money. Yeah. Um, you know, people have even asked if, if our show could travel, and um, I think it should. It should travel, but it just costs so much money. And I always, always, you know, all my life, I've always slept with the wrong people. You keep thinking, you, so, you sorry, going, sorry, you, you're going to. <laughs> you keep, keep, keep thinking you're going to strike it like <laughs> uh, he doesn't listen to podcasts. <laughs> so, um, so it's it's about the money, and I and I think, but but slowly, and things for me as I've matured, um, you know, since the last time you met me, yes. my approach to my my storytelling is different. The mm-hmm. stuff I talk about has changed. And um, so it's been a slow process, and but I think in the other spectrum as well, in, in terms of traveling with, with our stuff outside of the country, I'm feeling mm. that I'm getting there now sure. um, with my work, and I'm very excited about things happening now. So obviously your partner, um, Anwar, is part of his part of the team yeah do you guys have pretty a role, much the boss uh, i mean do you guys have a role play and he asks you to be smiling <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know oh, what's cuter the, the actual question or that you sat and thought about it and even did a little body roll do you role play are you gonna let me in <laughs> <laughs> i'll do the driver <laughs> I was very, I'd love to role play. I, I, I was very reserved. Um, so, so no, there's no time for role play. But thank you, thank you for for inquiring. When do you workshop the characters if you're not going to role play them? I no, I, that's a madness. It's a madness in my head. It's a madness in my head. I can only, um, you know, I can only really go absolutely crazy with characters once there's a group of people sitting there oh, watching yes. me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now. <laughs> Obviously, with fame comes a, a lot of attention. Yeah. And sometimes relatives out of the woodwork. Have you ever had to deal with that? Um, yes, all the time. It, yeah. it continues. I mean, people come up to me um, a lot and say, um, Hi, um, I'm a lottering. Or they go, um, uh, you know, I knew this is the best story for me, which I still can't figure out. I was doing um, an interview in El Dorado Park in Aldo's. Yeah. And this gentleman waited for me outside the, the studio because he was listening in his car wherever he was, but he lived in the vicinity of the studio. And, and this happened just a year ago. And I came out and he waited for me and he said, I'm so proud um, to hear you, you know, because I remember you as a kid oh, wow. running in the street. Oh, wow. And I said, oh, you're from Cape Town? He said, no, from Aldo's. You stayed three doors away from me. Shut up. And I said, um, no, um, no, I'm from Cape Town. He said, yeah, no, yeah, no, it's, yeah, yes, yes, funny, hold on, yeah, in my eyes. And I said, no, no, when he was done with me, I believed that I grew up in yes. Aldo's. I actually called my brother and I said, are you sure? Like, that <laughs> this man is convinced that, so, um, but he, he wasn't coming from a space of his family, but he, he just said that I grew up in his house. But, but there, there are, sure, there are a lot of things who come. And then the odd thing is, um, there are white people who say to me, I'm a lot, but they're excited. And only after they say it, can I see they've real, they realize what's going on. Because I go, oh. So, you know, so, it, so what? So, <laughs> you, you owned my great grandparents? So you're a lot. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, there are many lot. No, no, I asked this because I don't know if you remember about 14 years ago, um, Beyonce's dad, Papa Knowles, yes. uh, had an affair. Yes. From this, uh, this affair, a child was born, Nixon. Okay. So now Nixon's mom is all over media over the past week talking about how Nixon keeps asking um, about his sister Beyonce and, 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 and the fact that he feels excluded. How old is Nixon? He's 13. He's 13. Yeah. I think he suffers from, um, not blue ivy, from green Green Ivy, because he's green with envy. He's been watching, like we all have, because, you know, she's brought Blue Ivy onto yeah, stage. Yeah. So I think he wants to be her. Oh. Um, he wants access to the traveling budget, to traveling the world, to the allowance. Because it's very interesting, because people who, who yearn for family, they seem to only yearn for wealthy rock star oh, families. Yes, yes, yes. You know, you never hear <laughs> just the average person. It's like I see you don't have any food. Uh, yeah, exactly. Here's some money. Exactly. So now nah, he, he wants in on the action. It's not 
it's not bizarre for me. I can mm-hmm. completely understand that that's what, um, you know, that's where Nixon's head is at. But I don't think um, Queen B is going to budge. But also, surely it's Alexandra's responsibility to say to this kid that you are a result of me breaking up a family. So you are a love child. So unless your dad facilitates for a relationship, don't expect a relationship. Because now poor Queen B is under pressure to meet some kid that she never asked for a sibling from another woman. Yeah. But but you you're making out as though Nixon's mommy um, is very rational and almost um, not attention seeking. Uh, yeah, the, 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 I, I love I love your perspective. You're giving us so much credit. I think she's sitting there next to Nixon, you know, and she's got a gun to his head. <laughs> like, like phone them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Say the following, and she's holding it up. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Another story in the news this week, um, uh, Gauteng Premier, my favorite... Pre- Listen, I need to just give a disclaimer. Um, uh, Panyaza de Sufi is my favorite Premier of all Premiers. Okay. Uh, when he was MEC, favorite MEC of all MECs. I think when he was spokesperson at the Department of Education in the late 90s, favorite um, spokesperson. So Panyaza is one of my favorite, you know, politicals okay. out there. But anyway, so he's the Gauteng Premier, and he's been doing a jobs initiative called Nasispani. They had a big workshop on June 16 at Nazrek. Uh, people were coming to apply for jobs, dropping off their CVs and stuff. Um, he's also set up a task. It's like a little Panyaza army. Yeah. Uh, the Panya Panyas. They uh, enforce laws and order, law and order in the townships and uh, informal settlements. But now this week, political parties are saying, but Panyaza is using state resources to campaign for the ANC. And it has me wondering, but when is he supposed to do his work then? Yes. Or are you saying before elections, no one should do that job because it might be electioneering? I, I don't understand. Yeah, there's a magnifying glass just prior to elections on everybody um, because I think it, p- people question everything that politicians do all of the time. And this has happened before. The closer we get to elections, yeah. um, you know, we've we've seen that in Cape Town as well. Suddenly, like... Um, the roads are being resurfaced, and you know, Jim yes. is coming to your show to give you a kiss. Uh, there we go. <laughs> wow, John, how did you get backstage <laughs> with this chick? This is my, so, my sitting like this. <laughs> little contribution to the arts. And I remember us having a conversation. Um, you know, my, my, I was sitting with my children. We said we were talking about this the last time. Yeah. And we were saying the conclusion that we drew is whatever it takes. Mm. If it is a tactic in your head that this is what you want to do to uh, warm up um, to people who need to vote for you. But in the same time, stuff is being done. Yes. Great stuff. We, we are in the country, I say, whatever it takes. And you know, if, if houses need to be fixed and built... Oh, they will and, be. And, and you know, <laughs> let, let them. Because now we're talking about real live humans who are sure. going to benefit Absolutely. from that. Yeah. Um, we need to obviously hold people accountable. Oh, I, this means that I'm in an adult interview. I've never used the word accountable. We need to hold people accountable. Well done, comrades. <laughs> Afterwards, though, to say, finish the job. You know, you can't just, just build a house with yep. one window and then there's the elections and yep. you win the election and then that place is... I think um, that's where it comes in as well. But but when it comes to, to, to providing young South Africans with skills mm. and um, ultimately employment, these are important issues. Absolutely. So I don't think that political fighting, one party fighting the other, should get in the way of progress, Mm. whatever it takes. Sure, absolutely. Final story from this week. Um, Orlando Pirates are in Spain playing a soccer soccer tournament. And one of the teams is from Israel, from Tel Aviv. Yes. So now they are especially your older, retired uh, political veterans saying Orlando Pirates must boycott either the team, the fixture with the team within the tournament, or they must pull out of the tournament. And Orlando Pirates are saying we're going to Spain because we're, you know, we're part of this tournament. Yes. We want to play this tournament. 
wasn't they um yeah i mean this affects this is about the israel um uh, yes, uh, uh, israel uh, yeah and and who you support and and what it looks like out there I don't know. One of our Miss South Africans went to to uh, Lalela. Yeah, my, la, her name is Lalela. Yes, yes, she went. Yes. Yeah, and and um, came back with nothing. I think, but I mean, you uh, for it stays on your CV though that you went. You know, if you Google her now yeah. and uh, talk about controversy, that's going to be there. You know, that that, that she went. But um, I don't know who Orlando Pirates is going to upset. Though I mean. Uh, you, you're going to say Jewish fans mm. would be upset if you boycotted the thing. But yes. <laughs> yeah. But when an Orlando Pirates is playing, I've never heard a whole lot of Jewish people in the stands, like, you know, Oy Vey or... What. So, it's, it's a bit of a... Oy Vey. <laughs> Oy Vey. So, I think you got to weigh it up. But for me, if I was the boss, yeah. I would say, um, I would say boycott it. Okay. So it's, you... it's just, it's a, it's a... It's a stand that you take. Sure. Yeah. But do you, for, 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 for instance, there's an argument that there are ANC veterans who are saying they mustn't go, but the government, which is an ANC government, haven't boycotted Israel. Yes, they've downgraded the embassy, but they're still doing trade with Israel. So why would you expect a private soccer team to take a stand that you as a government haven't taken? Yeah, so you're saying the government's not speaking with, with one voice. So what I'm saying right. is, you know, the ANC veterans are saying yeah. this, but their mother body, which is government, are doing nothing about the same situation. Yes, they've said what they've said, but there's no policy that says we're not going to trade with them. We're not yeah. going to be friends with them. Yeah, so yeah. So why shouldn't a private team decide for themselves what they want to do? And if anything, if, for instance, if I was pirates, I'd say we're going to play the tournament, but we're going to play with black armbands in solidarity with Palestine, for instance. That way you've made a okay. statement, and uh, I don't know how good they are, but or even say we're going to wear black armbands and we're going to kick their butts on behalf of, as opposed to... Oh, just, wow, you're going to take it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to kick or, their, we're going to kick their butts. Or we will play the tournament, but we won't play that match. Yes, obviously points will be docked, for the match we miss, but we will go to the tournament, but we won't play that match. You see, you're messing with my head now. You're way too intelligent about the whole thing. So I'm just going to bring it down to money. Are they going to be paid well? Um, I've, I've changed my thinking. Um, I'm obviously just going to look into the financial benefits of this. Yeah, and is yeah, there money yeah, involved? Yeah, is there money involved? Ach, then just put your beliefs aside and go. Is this my no, talk now? Yeah. Just raise the money. My bro, my carry here. Listen, I know you need to run because you're a busy man. Um, where can people catch you either on stage, uh, on social media? What are you working on? I heard a rumor about a streaming um, deal possibly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm going, well, everything's on marklotching.com. It's Mark with a C. And my, my tour dates for the whole year you can find on marklotching.com. So we're touring around the country at the moment yeah. with a stand-up show. And it's been absolutely... So do you have dates offhand that you can share with us? For the tour, go offhand, but uh, I've got staff who deal with that. No, I, I apologize. God, <laughs> that's like expecting me to drive my own car. What are you? So, um, no, all the all the dates are on marklotting.com. Why would you put me on the spot like that? So, um, and then we are very excited because um, Auntie Mel the musical is that that's going into filming um, quite soon. So Amazon came and saw the show Shut in Cape up. Town. Yes. And so you're going to once again be making loans from me. You tend to do that whole, every time I do well. A whole Amazon. So, a whole Amazon. When you, when you did your online comedy show during lockdown, probably the most successful online yes, comedy show. The, on the that's continent. when all the lotteries came to the fore. Because people were doing maths on Facebook while the show was happening. Wow. So how many millions did you make? <laughs> you know, I don't do this for money. I do this for love. But, yo, I was exhausted from counting money. I had to go to the doctors to fix my fingers after no, that. Yeah. Your fingers are still dying. <laughs> <Count> to... <laughs> let me do it again. Okay, well, okay, okay wait, let's start again. Okay, three million. Okay, let me come from three million because I know about that. <laughs> oh, man. We had a great time online, yeah. That was wild and crazy. What was the learning from that that you feel other comedians need to maybe replicate? 
I've, I've, I, I, I will never do anything that I feel other comedians need to replicate. I mean, yeah. All, all, yeah, yeah. Must make the money. No, no, no. All the learnings for myself, because you, because you never stop learning. But I, th I think, um, you know, during that time, during COVID, when we had yeah. to perform just to cameras and no audience, um, uh, what I took from that is how. Um, comfortable and and confident you've got to be in your story if you believe that a story is funny yes because we are accustomed to because the audience redirects my shows all the time that, oh, yeah. that's that's energy. energy yeah that's but that was suddenly gone for almost two years so like just, gone so just you unwind the cat the, and the two cameramen the one was always bubbleless because it was COVID, so he was drinking illegally the whole day actually so i've managed i managed to buy from him <laughs> And the other guy's just not interested in comedy. You know, you get those yes, people who yes. just go like... Steel face, steel face. Yeah. So I was so close to Jesus during that time because I'm <laughs> dropping the punchlines <laughs> to silence and I'm like, you know, it's between you and me, man. Yeah. This would be the work. Yeah. Um, so I, I developed over that time, I developed a... a you know, it's very important when you tell... Because you, you, if you see me on stage, I'm quite frantic. Yeah. I've become, I'm still frantic, but inside I've become a lot more calmer. I'm, I'm, I rest with the stories more mm. and I go, if it doesn't work tonight, just tell it differently or, or yes, take it out. Yes. I, I never used to be there. I, I used to be like that. Yeah. And during that time, you had to just be rooted, yeah. tell the story and, and believe in it, the it, funniness that of land. the story. Yes. And, and you know, when you say what other people need to learn from that, maybe I should go there. At the same time, you must also then be confident enough to say, gosh, I'm not funny. <laughs> I think I sometimes look at people and I go, is there nobody at home who at your bride telling you that you should do a first aid course or something? You can go and save lives. But um, yeah, right now, don't take up that battery mic. <laughs> we need that mic. We need that battery power. Mark, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your mind. Thanks for your creativity. Thanks for just being the super dude that you are, man. Always like a chatting to you. I've got big love and respect for you. We'll thank see you at Casino this weekend and go to marklottering.com, Mark with a C, to find out where else Mark, Merle, and everyone else will be in your neighborhood. Mark, thank you very much. Love you. Thank you. Mark Lottering has left the building. This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. This kid. Yeah. <laughs> really kicks. <laughs> He's got a name that's easy to chant at a party. He's also got a name that's sort of appropriate, considering our power issues. However, listening to his output could probably put you in a lighter mood. Please give a wow welcome to Dark, a.k.a. Mulapo Malachi, a.k.a. Dark in your city, a.k.a. Darky. Dark. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Up, my dude? I'm okay. I'm okay. My man, ladies say my name right, sir. Which one? Dark. Uh, what, what do people call you? Dark you. Dark you. Dark you. Dark you. Yeah, dark you. Know, dark 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 <laughs> yeah, so dark. <laughs> I'm so, I'm no, so no, but bad. I think when you read Dark in Your City, then yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, true. But I'm also not done introducing you. Co-founder of You Are, which is an event and TV program, yeah. resident DJ and organizer of the Kunye Music Festival, yeah. raised in Porukwane, one of four boys. Yeah, one of four. Gee. I'm the last born. Mama's baby. Tell, tell, us, tell us about your childhood, born and raised where? Yeah, we were four boys. Yeah. I'm the last born, um, raised by both parents. Uh, uh, my dad, my mom, yeah, and I had a pretty good upbringing, you know. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so were you raised? In, so you're born and raised in Polokwane. Yeah, I was born and raised in Polokwane. I just went out of Polokwane High School, sure. started studied somewhere else, then varsity came to Josie. Mm. So I'm a pure Polokwane kid. Uh, what is the secret to surviving three older brothers? I don't know. Just don't fight with them. Come on now, guys, because I. Get problem. All the brothers are a problem. But me and my brothers are tight, man. Like sure. if you see us hanging out, you you think we're friends. So what's the age range? What's the age range between? Uh, my friends? older brother is like forty-four. Yeah. And the second one is like forty, and the third one is like thirty-eight. Then. Yeah. So and I'm thirty-one. So it's, it's it's balanced. What did you look up to about your brothers growing up? 
that you said, this one is cool, I want to be like him because he does this like that. That one, I love this about him. Yo, it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot because they all have different characters. Sure. The first one is so loud and so he's a people's person. Mm -hmm. The second guy is the, the school guy. Sure. The third guy is in between the two. Mm -hmm. And then there's me that's just different. So I, I just picked up characters, like mm -hmm. different characters from all three of them. So. I know what not to do from that other guy. Yes. That what to do from that. This one upset guy. mama like this. So yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's what that's what I saw the whole time. I'm like, hey, this one does this. So at the time growing up, what's the dream and the picture in your mind's eye about the rest of your life? Like you know, I was just I I think I've always known what I wanted to become. You know, yeah. like there's one brother of mine, the two brothers of mine, the elder brothers. They introduced me to. To music and I, mm. I watched people like Mzambia, Msawa making it at an early age. Sure. I was like, damn, I, I want to. This is doable. I want to jump out of a bag and say yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you can, you can actually make it as a kid. You know, I've always sure. wanted to make it as a kid. Mm. That's I think that's why I started working so early. Okay, so early you stages of my. So you you were a wannabe child star. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to. <laughs> you, you so bad, so bad that I I wanted. I went auditioned for for uh, channels and Dio TV, those yeah, other things at a very young age. So I, I've always wanted to be. But then you started dabbling in production and yeah. music in your early teens. Yeah, yeah but take I us started, that. started making music at the age of uh, six six forty. Yeah. And my first release was at the age of 16. So sure. What was that first release? Uh, it was an EP on Infinite Records with Galawa. Yeah. Yes. So it was it was a time where uh, uh, Afro and Travel was booming. So it was it was uh, we we were the so we call ourselves the class of 2008. It was yes, yes. Uh, myself, Kulo. It was a, a big pack of sure. people. So we were dropping uh, Tribal House at that time. So sure. I was just 16. Yeah. Let's talk about the importance of walking your own path, your own lane. So, for instance, you are part of the class of 2008. Yeah. And within that class, some started breaking out quicker than the others. Yeah. Uh, some started doing overseas gigs quicker than quicker, the others. Quicker, yeah. So, in your mind, as this is happening, that, for instance, now the world is waking up to a good order song. Yeah. What's going on in your head? See all of this happening. You know, obviously, as a young guy, the pressure is there, right? Yeah. So, but I feel like I've, I've myself. This is me now. I, I just took my seat mm. and just watched everything happening, mm. and I decided, you know, what, I'm going to learn from everyone. Sure. And I'm going to be patient with myself because mm. I have a plan, mm. you know. So I'm not going to do stuff because people are doing stuff, and I'm not going to try and move this way because. He's moving this way. So I've always knew I'm, I'm one person that believes in God's plan. Sure. I believe in God's plan. And I, I know, I know if I put my head to something, it's going to happen. It doesn't matter when it happens, but it's going to happen. So I just took a seat back, watched everything happen. Mm. Then I, I chilled about it. And I knew my time will probably come mm. one day. So, but, but you're also human, though. Yeah. There was never a point where you felt like it's, ish. Um, Dimo, I know you've got a plan. I know, yeah. you're, I know you're King Kong, but why yeah. is mine taking so long? It happens now still. It happens to the best. So yeah. it's, it's normal. I feel like it's normal. But I just feel like you just need to say, hey, wait, sure. relax. Uh, your, things are, you say, your life is not that bad. You know, it's, you, you're working and and that's what keeps the fire burning. I'm like, you know, I look at myself. Mm. I look at myself then and I look at myself now and I'm like, you know what? Actually, was I'm Antoine or Pusha, man? You know, don't don't put so much pressure into yourself. And we are so unkind to ourselves at the best of times. Yeah, true. Where if you counted your blessings, you'd actually realize that you're actually kicking ass. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. You know, I try. I look at the positive more than I, more than the negative. I look mm. at myself and I'm like, damn, I'm kicking ass. You know, mm -hmm. I'm rocking and I'm I'm not doing bad. I'm. It makes you look well. Especially when you look at your career year on year or from five years ago, yeah. 10 years ago, and now. Yeah. Has there been growth? If there's been growth, then you're doing well. Rapidly, but, serious but, growth. But often we spend so much time looking in the other lane. That's what happens when you look what people, when you look at people. When yeah. you, the next guy buys whatever. You lose focus of your own lane. focus. And you know, people are doing other things. 
And, and, and for all you know, yeah, as, a, as an inheritor, yeah, you know, I bought a big car. When I know, so when you push. feel like, uh, yeah, no, so <laughs> I try to avoid that. I cut out the noise, yeah. and just focus on myself and sure. focus on working and what's good for me. Where Where was the turning point in your music production career? I, sh- I don't know, hey, like, I like, I, I don't really know. Like for me. <laughs> It's it's uh, every 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 project is a turning point. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the last project I worked on was a turning point. It mm-hmm. got me somewhere. Sure. It got me where I wanted to. What be. was the last project? Be- the la- before before this one, it was Must Be Africa. Yes. It was Must Be Africa. And who did you and work with on Must Be Africa? On Must Be Africa, I worked with uh, Kitchen Mess, Black Liz is on the album, mm. uh, Kyle Deutsch is on the album. Uh, it's it's uh, proper. Pro- uh, 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 collabos that mm. at that time I felt I needed to work with. Oh yes, yes. yeah, yeah. And you're, you're scratching an itch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it was at that time it was a turning point. It was like, okay, uh, this is different from what I I've done uh, four, four, three years ago, mm. and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to try do this, and I did it at a time where hip hop was big, yes. and I was like, okay, uh, who do I need to put on this album? And I tried to to fuse it with, with what what was happening then. Yes, yes. So yes. same as now, the same mm. thing I did now. Pro- current project was also a turning point. So, mm, mm. so. Would you agree that it's easier to make movements when, like you you've described, you turn every achievement into a milestone of sorts? That way you can see that incrementally I'm growing. Yeah. As opposed to we wait for the big thing to happen. Yeah, I think that's what I do. Yeah. I don't, when I work, I don't uh, count my eggs before they hatch. Like I don't think about it as this big thing. Yeah. You know, I think about it as a milestone. Like, sure. this is what I want to achieve and this is what I'm going to do. It it works, it doesn't work out, it's, mm. it's all me. Mm. I, I have achieved what's in my heart and what's in my mind i want to do this show so that's how i i look at it and Mm. that's how i do things or or this is what i want to achieve today today yeah today now because we're in such a hurry to succeed hope or yeah no uh, to get prayers to to do the big things get prayers that sometimes the little things you did on that one day yeah those are the incremental gains yeah because because what you did today is more than what you did maybe all of last week. That's true. That's true. That's why I, every day I work on myself. I wake yeah. up every day. I work on myself. I was just telling my guys and my, my team, you know, there's nothing that uh, I was angry the other day. I was like, there's nothing that pisses me off like someone that comes into my space and wants to treat my space like a hobby. Oh, kids, yes. Or yes. their hobby. Because mm-hmm. I work on this thing every day. So I give 100%. Yeah, I give 100% every day because, you know, every day we need to do something. Mm. We need to do something that will get us somewhere someday so sure. so it's not about Obopa like yes. now for Obopa it's everybody wants Obopa it's about, it's about know, the next step it's forward it's about the next step forward but if you don't do it work on it every day and you, you don't plan mm. you'll have a problem because some people just wake up look for the next pop wake up look for the next no, pop. no, no purpose no, no purpose no, no, yeah for no me, direction no goal for me I'm planning I'm already planning for 2025 yes sir I'm already ahead so I, I, I hear you say you were angry the other day. I mean, yeah. don't imagine you're angry because you <laughs> look like such a chilled guy. What does dark, angry dark sound like? Yeah, it's crazy. You don't, you don't, you don't want. I, I hardly get angry, by the way. But you know, with work, you need to push your people. Sometimes mm-hmm. you need to be like, hey, guys, get up, let's do this thing. But but listening to you talk about, you know, you're talking to your people and your team. I mean, looking back ten years ago, did you yeah. ever think you'd even have a team? I thought, I, I mean, I've always thought I would, have a, I would have a team, but I didn't have the resources at that time and the, the direction and the people to guide me on how to manage and how to build a team. And how but, to, but the dream was clear, the though. The dream was clear. I knew. I, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm one person that's obsessed with the music industry, so I look what you guys do. Yeah, yeah I've always known you to have a team sure. and a manager since. Sure. Yeah. In fact, can we can we can we talk about that though? The importance of not only having a dream and a goal, yeah, but also having the discipline to get there. Yeah. What has it taken for you? It's 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 serious work. Uh, it takes a lot to be a leader, honestly speaking. You know, because uh, your team feeds off from your energy. Mm-hmm. If they don't feel you, 
they don't do anything. So it just takes a lot of discipline. You can't tell your team, look, we're having tea at 1. This is what we do in this office. 1 o'clock is tea time. And at 10, you you have your legs on the desk. You're having tea. You know, they're going to look around and like, yeah. but what's this guy doing? Mm. So it takes a lot of discipline. You know, you have to cut out a whole lot of stuff and you need to be the leader. Because at the end of the day, mm. with a career like mine, is you're the person they're working on. This mm. is not this company that they're working for sure. you are the company so mm -hmm. you need to be disciplined and you need to be focused and you need to lead so which is the most difficult part is the discipline and the leading so mm -hmm. for you to become a leader yeah it's a problem because you need to be spoken also you need to be not be afraid to tell people what you want mm -hmm. Your team, you need to... And, and, and not be afraid to tell them when they're fucked up. Yeah, yeah, no, you need to say it straight up, like, my guy, this is not going to work. Yes, I'm not going to break you. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, no. I'm going to tell you. You tell them straight that this is not it. This is not what I want as mm -hmm. an, as dark, you know, this is... And you need to l learn to listen also because, you know, people, people, you, you, you bring in people in your lives to, to, to help you. So if you know you're going to shut them out and not listen to what they say because we are now man india no 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 you need to listen what if yeah. if you need to equip them equip them with with anything it could sure. be with pens it could be with mm -hmm. thought just give them what they need to sure. work on you let's talk about your relationship with shimza how yeah. did you guys hook up that's and, my bro and how did it become what it is now yeah we've always known each other through the music industry but mm -hmm. uh we started hanging out like closely with each other when you know, we're in through his cousin Stan. So sure. we were like, we, he's known me as a DJ and I've known him as a DJ and we would uh, come across each other at parties and like events. I'd play after him. Yo, my bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we started hanging out and he's like, one time he asked me, it was like years ago. He's like, bro, what are you doing now? I'm like, bro, just be honest. My things are not going well for me now. I, you know, I can hardly keep up with my rent, my staff. He's like, bro, come work with me. Uh, I need a road manager. I'm like, bro, that's actually a dope idea. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it because I want to learn, you know? Sure. But let me tell you something. I'm going to do it for a period of time, mm -hmm. learn, and I'm going to... He's like, bro, cool. I'm okay, I'm okay with that, mm -hmm. you know? And I and some people don't even know it. There's At a time, I became Shimza's road manager. Sure. So I'll travel with him everywhere, mm -hmm. have his bag, USBs, and... All, all, like, all, all, all the speaker boy. Get the road straight up, yeah. you know? And people were like, hey, Doc, what are you doing? You yeah. know, because you're known to be a, a dope producer, you're known sure. to be a dope DJ. What's going on? And I'm like, bro, relax. You know, some people... Well, I'm not going to be able to You know how people are, you know? Or, or, or are you aware of it? Aware of it, no. Yeah, yeah, the my, you know? So I was like, ah, you know, I had an idea and I had a plan. I was like... And, and, and sometimes, it doesn't matter how big you, you become. Yeah. Sometimes you need to step back. Yeah, true. To be able to jump forward further. True. Back to the but, dream. But, but because we have such pride issues... We have such big man syndrome. Yeah. You want to be the big man. Yeah. You don't want to be someone else's subordinate yeah. in order for that to be your springboard. Yeah. And, and, and I, I fully understand why you would do that. Because uh, there's, 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 there's a word you used to use uh, when you were doing a 100-meter race. Uh, we pay you, Yeah. So you take a step back, step back before you... We pace yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what you did. That's what I did. I just literally became his road manager, traveled with him, and I got to see the other side of the world. Yes. And I was like... Wow, this so this is how it works. This is you know, the possibility. This is the possibility. I've wanted something that I did not know anything about. Oh yes. So now I'm looking at this thing and I'm seeing this thing. I'm like, it's clear. Oh, it's clear now. Yes. This is what. This is what. And I ask him when I travel with him. I ask him, oh, who's this guy? What does this guy do? Sure. He tells me, he's like, you know, this is who. Mm. This is this. And yeah, at a the time where I felt, you know, it's, I'm cool. Sure. I went back to him. I was like, bro, mm. it's that time now. I'm gonna go back to doing what I do. Yes. He's like, bro. Now let's work on other stuff. It's not like I, I was going to yeah. say. I was going to say, even in the situation where you were in, had you not taken that leap of faith in yourself and the step back and yeah. step down, you wouldn't have learned what you learned. Yeah, true. And chances are, you wouldn't be business partners. Right? True, we would. I don't think we would have because uh, that that me being his role manager. Uh, opened up another door he just started trusting me with his life yes. it means now i can go to his house get his one two he can send me wherever, wherever he wants to send me so, so he's just so picked what, it up. What, what happened to the g-wagon since you have keys to the house i was out with him that's the thing <laughs> <laughs> with the g-wagon i was out with him so i don't so, know anything so we were in europe we were in portugal when that so, happened so you have an alibi yeah <laughs> 
I was out. We were out. We, were, we were, I was with them when we got the information. Sure. So we were like, hey. So, so what? Uh, so, what is your business partnership with Shimza? What do you guys work on together? We work on a lot of stuff. Yeah. We have uh, events. Mm. Uh, we have you are. We started Kunye. We it started off with with us. Business started with Kunye. Sure. When we what start, is Kunye for those that know nothing about Kunye? Kunye is a festival. It's an Afro festival. Afro House? Yeah, Afro House Festival, sorry. Yeah. An Afro House Festival that's uh, so it's, got a, uh, it's a worldwide festival now. We just had a Cunha in Albania the other day. So and that it was grown, so dope. It was so dope, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it has grown so quick. So, yeah. But uh, besides the Cunha being uh, a festival, Cunha is actually Shims' label. Mm. Uh, it's a music label. He's been dropping music. Sure. Yeah, I have a drop coming out on Cunha. There's, so there's a lot happening with Cunha. So how... We, we started becoming partners as we were chilling at my house mm. and we were working on stuff obviously just the little stuff and we were actually it was lockdown and we were like so bored and we were on youtube watching and we searched for ourselves mm. and we we're like yo yeah, we haven't dj'd in a long time and i'm sure. like yo, i haven't heard you play in a long time and i searched for shimza and there's just a limited number of sets that i could find mm. and after shimza said we searched for dark we found like three four and we're like bro Actually, we don't have anything on YouTube that's ours. Sure. You know, we were like, let's just start something and start shooting this thing. Yeah. When we started Kunyu, we started it off at our office. Yes. So we were like to the four, and it was the first, I remember the first episode was myself, Shims, and Dakapo. Sure. And three people at the back, mm -hmm. you know. And it just started growing from there. When they eased up the restriction, lockdown restrictions, we started invite, started this whole invite thing. We started the yeah. private invite thing. We were like, and everyone was asking, hey, where is this happening? Where know. is this happening? And we had these weird names. I remember Tulani, because mm -hmm. Tulani had Tanzania. Yeah. He was like, no, this, that's France. So it's happening in Paris, because we were not, we were trying to hide where it's happening. Sure, sure. So it just got out of control. It's, a lot of people started ex having access to it. Sure. So that's how. And now it's a beast. It's a, now it's a beast. And going global. And going global. What's the difference between Cunha and UR? The difference between Cunha and UR is, you know, when we started Cunha, we we focused more on the 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 festival vibe, mm. people standing. Sure. And I remember the first Cunha, we had so many challenges in terms of seating mm. and we don't we don't want to put in too much seating because we wanted to have that festival it's a festival there must it's be a TV. festival there must, must be rocking yeah and then that's where the, it hits us with you are that mm. we can actually have best of both two properties two, yeah. two properties we can have one where it's still afro house music but it's got an element of this current lifestyle to it mm -hmm. uh people that uh you know you have people that drink expensive champagne people that want to be seen with the coolest people, yes. want to rock up with the coolest and hot, hottest chick. Mm -hmm. You know, we created that vibe. We, Afrotech did not have that vibe. Yes. We took that vibe and we merged Afrotech to it. So sure. we were like, let's see if it works. And it worked. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to our first UR uh, at the rooftop. We were selling champagne. We were like, okay, let's add this whole sparkler thing yes. now. Let's do this. Let's do this. Add a, add a cool lifestyle to it because yes, I, yes. we feel like uh, that's what the music lacks, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we were so we were holding on to the music so much, and that's how the other guys were beating us. Yes, they were like they they put in the they plug in the music everywhere. Mm -hmm. The music's got a lifestyle that goes with it. Mm -hmm. Hip hop's got a lifestyle that goes with yes. it. Ama Piano's got a lifestyle that goes with so it. So what about us? Yes. We need to create a lifestyle for us. We need to make it cool. Sure. So we had the coolest people coming to you. Are mm -hmm. they were you were like you you find someone you, you don't even expect there, and they're like bro. You know, actually, In, including politicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Including, so they like, you know, this Afrotech thing is not that bad. Yeah, this music is nice. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's okay. It's, so in a nutshell, yeah, Kunye is for the culture. Yeah, you are is to make a buck. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, we are not making my please to come, come to your. <laughs> Before we let you go, uh, yeah. you've got an album that is out. Yeah, uh, easily contender for album of the year in this country, easily. If not in Afro House for the year, yeah. Tell us about that album. Uh, More Life, that's the album. Yes. More Life is my my latest album, and it's such a such a dope album, as you say. Do I feel like, like I feel I the same? Album the of first the year time. Contender. Let me be honest with you. Yeah. It's the first time, mm. right? I feel what you just said. Yeah. I feel like it's an easy contender for album of the year. Yeah. Because when I it's an, it's I feel like it's the first time in my life. Sure. I make an album that I can listen to it without thinking on how I could have 
done this or could have improved it. It just sounds perfect. So it's ready. It's ready. Because sometimes you release a song, but you listen back in and you're like, months. ah, it's like, hey, I should have actually. Yeah. For me, I, th- I feel like it's ready. And, and yeah. the people that are on the album, the collaborations that are on the album, Who's on the album? so dope. Uh, so stands, so Java is a, so stands out. Uh, Java on the, on the album stands out because it's the first house song he's been on yeah. he's ever been on and, so, he, and he killed it he, he killed it man yeah. amazing I was so nervous I was like I wonder what he's going to do Yeah. and he just delivered it so it's been years coming my collaboration with Java has been it's been we've spoken about it years ago so sure, sure. it's only happening now and it's it's Marumba Peach also they so dope uh, super, super talent, talent. Uh, yeah. they my uh, favorite also yeah. and also Blackie uh, Blackie being on the on an Afro House album oh, yes. like wow so yes. so it's the album was just well thought of and well planned it mm. sounds amazing I love it it's my favorite album. so are you ready for the critical acclaim and the awards this album should pick up yeah, I'm more than ready. Eh? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, I'm just not, not, not. I'm sure you walk around with a speech in your pocket. Ah, uh, no, no. Just, just That's the I'm thing. Right. I'm no not. Ceremony. I'm not. I'm not invested in in that because I know what life can do to you. Eh? Yes. Sir. If you invest too much into those things, eh? yeah. yeah, they'll disappoint you, and you'll become just so bitter and whatnot. So, but the album is out every digital platform. Yeah. it's available. There. The album is out and every digital platform. Please stream the album. Yes, sir. Download the album. Buy the album. Mm. Yeah. Tell your grandmother about the album. Play it for her. Please, she'll like it. She'll like it. Where do we find you next? Like, either the next big event you're doing, or are you traveling? Are you touring? Yeah, I'm touring now. I'm Mm -hmm. uh, promoting the album. So, the next big show we're doing is UR in September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, UR is also, we've grown it now in terms of numbers. So, we're turning into a a pretty much a lifestyle festival. Oh, yes. yes. So, yeah, the next one is now in September. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Are you guys going to book me? Bro, I'm, I was every time I try to get you on your your in Vanda somewhere. So. My man, one of us must stay in Limpo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You left Limpo, so one of us must go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do it. The, okay, let's do it. Okay, no, done deal. Cool. Done. Deal. And then uh, social media, where do we find you? Social media, you can follow me at Dark City. That's at D R Q U E C I T Y. That's my Instagram, mm-hmm. Twitter, also D A R Q U E. C-I-T-Y, that's at Dark City, or you can like my Facebook page. Sure. Just Dark, uh, D-A-R-Q-U-E. Sure. Yeah. My dude, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you. My man, you kick ass, and I don't even think you are ready for how high you're going to fly. Um, oh, watch, watch this space and uh, watch your own space. Man, yeah, those that's, are blessings. That's, that's from you. me to you, my dude. Thank you so much. Bro. T- I take that. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dark City is about to leave the building. It's been a cold, dark week, literally. We hope you don't let it dampen your spirit. We hope you find ways to push through. We hope we've helped lighten things a little so far. And we hope you all have a wow week ahead in spite of yourselves. We are out of here. Shout out to um, our guests, Mark Lottering and Dark City. Shout out to Amp Studios, uh, Pezulu for our cinematography, um, Africa Podcast Network, our imaging guy. Our imaging guy, he did all of this. This is... Um, Otis the Flow Fraser, shout out to you, my dude. Love, love, love you. Creative director, Kuvesh Mohan, and our show producer, Keletu Mudisa Gang. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. We're out of here.